Hey friends, welcome back to Homeschoolology. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Nikki. I'm a homeschooling mom of four. In our upcoming school year, we will have an eighth grader, fourth grader, kindergartner, and preschooler. And so today's video is I'm finally sharing with you guys. I know I've been talking about it a lot, a lot but I'm finally sharing with you guys my big history science um, course that I am planning for my eighth grader for next year. Now my fourth grader and possibly kindergartner will be joining in on some of these things, um, but not everything. But I'm gonna show you now kind of what my plan is for her and how I'm setting it up. Um, I will of course be updating you guys throughout the year as to how it's going and how things are working, but here is my plan. So I will be combining the big history project from the OER pro um, project. I have a whole video that I shared recently here that um, walks you through that whole program, what it is, how to implement it, how to use it, all of those things. Uh, but that is kind of what I'm kind of using as my main spine per se. Um, and then I'm adding in all these other resources that I'm gonna share with you now. So for the beginning, um, because the Big History Project starts um, at the Big Bang, and so we, I'm diving deep into those concepts, so deeper than what the Big History Project goes um, into because this is going to be our science for next year as well as our history. So I discovered um, these science chunks from Elemental Science, um, and so I am going to be using these. So they're like solar system one. There's one on um, stars and something. There, um, there's some on like atoms and molecules. Um, we've covered that heavily. I was a chemistry teacher, so we've covered that heavily, but you could easily fit that one into this part as well. But I'm skipping that because I've already covered it with her, with both of my girls heavily before. Um, and so, but there's all, all these science chunks I'll be sprinkling in along the way when we're talking about like the solar system like with the big history project there's not really a lesson that goes into you know it talks about all the other planets but it doesn't necessarily go into detail about all of them so i'm gonna put use this to stick in that detail this is designed for a slightly younger um age but i am using um resources like the um, science encyclopedia and things out of here the Osborne science encyclopedia and it has QR codes and I'm using those QR codes to kind of expand on um, what's in these guides for my older daughter um, but th these are the kinds of things that my younger daughter will be joining in on um, <clears throat> so that is one resource that we've added to it so I also got this big history of science um, or the history of science from Build Your Library. Uh, this, it, I've split, it, you know, it's much larger than this. I've split it into three parts actually, like ancient times, middle times, um, and then modern. Um, and so I'm gonna be incorporating that. Th she uses this, um, the history of science. It's a three textbook series. So this is the first one, Aristotle Leads the Way. She uses these books from Joy Hakim um, as her spine. I, um, this is very textbooky, and so it was a little bit different than what I thought it was going to be, but I think I'm, we are still going to really enjoy using this. So I'll be adding in like mm -hmm. this stuff along the way as well as it comes, you know, as it fits into the big history project. So those are two of the things that I've added for like science um, things to, to kind of beef up the science. And then when we get to, because the way it goes, it goes like, it says there are eight thresholds from the Big Country Project, and that thresholds are like where like big things happen. So like the first threshold is the Big Bang, then second and third threshold is like the development of the universe and Earth, and then um, the fourth th threshold, oh, well, I guess the fourth is Earth, um, the fifth threshold is life, the sixth is humans. So once we get to that threshold, human development, um, or human evolution. I'm doing an evolution unit um, for life. That one, I did purchase the Build Your Library, a Darwin and evolution unit. Flipping through it, it's, I'm not gonna use, I'm, 
going to use some of the books that she's recommended and maybe a few of the media things that she's recommended but I it's not fitting the way that I wanted it to fit so I'm kind of creating my own evolution unit um, using some of her resources and some of other resources I will share that unit later on um, because I'm not gonna like I don't want to make this video super long but I will share that later on if you guys are interested um, on what resources I pulled and what I'm using to kind of create that to add that in to that section um, but then once we get to the part of early humans humans starting that's where um, the curiosity chronicles and history quests start and so that's where I'll be sticking them in I we um, I did put like the first unit of basically history curiosity chronicles is what we're using but i did buy history quest because it was on sale and i've been wanting to look at it and wanting to see it i was going to sell the whichever one i didn't like um but i think i'm going to go ahead and hang on to both of them and we're going to supplement with some things out of the history quest book as well i don't really I'm, i've shared this before i don't love the the guides as much um with the History Quest, which is why we're going with Curiosity Chronicles, because they really love the resources that that you can get to go along with this, the teacher guide and the notebooking and the um, all the activities that it has in the teacher guide. So that's why we chose this one specifically. Um, but I decided to keep this one around and use this one um, to supplement. So when we get to that threshold six. I'll start pulling these in and kind of use this in conjunction with the Big History Project, um, pulling activities from both and videos from both of the things. So that is that. And then I also picked up this Layers of Learning um, Art Beginning because it does art like through, it goes through time. So let me, um, I'm in the process of printing it now. So, so you can see here. Um, it start, you know, it starts with like, what are the, what is our art, art supplies, elements of art, principles of design, all of that stuff. Um, we've covered most of this before, so I think I'm just going to start at principles of design because we haven't covered that yet. Um, but then it goes through time, so it says prehistoric art, early um, art and early civilizations, ancient art around the world, Greek art, Roman art. So I'm going to be pulling in these activities from this art where it lines up with <clears throat> what we're doing in the history project. So yes, it is a lot of resources. I'm not sugarcoating that. I'm not saying I'm not maybe a tiny bit insane, but going through and setting it up, it, it, I am working on pre-planning it because I know I won't be using all, like I won't have the brain capacity to set this all up throughout the year. So I am setting it all up in advance. That is what I'm working on currently. Um, I think we're it's gonna be like a really good and it is two subjects it's not like I'm it's not like it, I'm just doing this for one thing it is well it's technically three with art it's art it's science and it's history all together in one um, one main thing and so I really love we do a lot of unit studies because I love doing interdisciplinary things I love showing my ch kids how something and this, you know, in history connects to science or how how science, you know, kind of has, you know, altered the paths of history and things like that. So I just love this approach and it is a lot of resources and it is a lot of combining. We're not, obviously, there's no way we could do everything out of all of these. I'm pulling what I think is going to work best and putting it all into one thing. So what I'm using to organize all of this um, is... Google Classroom, um, mostly because I've used it before and I'm comfortable with it and I knew this was going to take me time to set up, but also because a lot of these resources that I'm using, um, like the Big History Project and uh, Crash Course and all that stuff, literally has like ways where you can just automatically set it up into Google Classroom. So that was going to make it, you know, make my life easier. So. I'm going to show you how I'm doing this, how I'm putting it all into Google Classroom. So I do have a video, I'll post it here. It is an old video, it's one of the, my first videos, um, but I do kind of walk you through the process of setting up Google Classroom. Um, if you guys want more information on how I utilize Google Classroom, feel free to comment down below um, and let me know and I can create another video on how, like, how I am setting up things or how I'm, you know, because that is might not be exactly how I'm setting things up now. Um, so if you want to 
see that, leave me a comment down below. Um, while you're down there, I'd love it if you would subscribe to this video or subscribe to this channel, ring the notification bell and give this video a thumbs up. It really does help a ton just hitting that thumbs up for us, you guys. Um, and so, but here is Google Classroom. Let me walk you through what I'm doing. So this is my history slash science course. Um, this main page is like where you can like put in notes. When I start assigning things, it, those assignments will come up on this main page. Um, but for now, I'm just setting up everything as a draft. So it is all um, a draft. I found, I mentioned this in my other video, but I found it is much easier to create my unit, the unit that I'm currently working on at the top and drag the whole unit down to the bottom rather than putting everything in order and having to drag every assignment all the way to the bottom. Google Classroom is not perfect by any stretch of the, the means, um, but it is a very useful tool that is 100% free and pretty user friendly. Um, or not user friendly necessarily, but like easy to comprehend. So I'm working on my current unit. You see I've gotten to evolution. That's how far I've gotten in my planning process so far. Um, so that's why evolution is sitting here at the top. When I'm done, I will drag this all the way down to the bottom. But let's go to my what is history. Here are all of my assignments that I created. Um, I said before you watch the video, do this then watch the video after you watch the video do this you know answer this question and it just kind of continues along that um, vein watch the video do the activity <clears throat> um, so that is kind of what all this looks like um, what I in my big history project video that I'll link right here I showed you how I'm pulling all of those resources and where I'm getting all of those resources from um, so I'm not going to go into too much depth here about that. Um, if you want kind of more in depth, I'll, you know, you can go back there. But let me go down to, so let's go down to our solar system. And this is where I, um, so, you know, these videos are from the Big History Project. This is, and then I said, I want to go into more depth here. So this is what I, what would have been in the Big History Project, but I want more. So then, um, <clears throat> this is also a big history project, and so is the next one. But from there, I went, this is where I went and found my own resources. So I did share in that other video about the crash course um, has a, a website that you can go to, and it has all the videos. So, you know, I came here to the astronomy um, and found videos that applied to what I was working on. They also have um, Crash Course Kids, and I did pull some of these wow. videos as well. They don't have it like laid out like they do on the website over there. You do have to come here, but you can go to the playlist, and it has all the different playlists. Um, so like here was Space Science, and so I pulled videos off of this playlist that I thought would be helpful. Because I am gonna be pulling in my younger daughter on some of that, I did choose to use some of those Crash, um, crash Course Kids videos rather than the actual Crash Course videos. If you're not aware, just so that you know, the Crash Course videos are written, are, you know, scripted to high school and higher. So some things you might not love for some of your younger kiddos, like some of their descriptions might be, you know, not exactly perfect for younger kiddos. Um, I kind of don't worry about that so much we typically i'm at least in the room while she's watching them so if there's something that comes up that i'm not necessarily thrilled with or something that i feel like might need th further explanation i do you know i'm there to kind of and you can of course preview these to you know eliminate that altogether so that little caveat but i am using a ton of crash course videos because they are fantastic they are engaging to watch i enjoy watching them my kids enjoy watching them so we are using a lot of those to supplement you can see here it has like what what you do and then the activities that i have pulled from the science chunks um here to you know this is mostly the activities that we're doing um notebooking things are here so i will have to pull those things as i go along but they're um everything is here for as far as like our videos and you know it's saying do this from this activity so that is what i am doing um i just got this layers of learning so i do need to kind of go back through and add this in i haven't added this in quite yet so if you're like seeing 
you know, as I scroll through here and there's no art, I haven't added it yet because I added this kind of at the last minute. Um, but that is what we are doing. That is how I, what the pieces that I'm using and how I'm putting it all together. I'm using the big history project as my main spine. That is what I'm mainly working on. Um, and then I'm throwing in these other things as they fit into that big story. Um, so I have put done a lot of um, resource book buying for this unit, which you don't necessarily need. Um, I feel like for this unit, you could get by with using the Big History Project, which is free, getting the Curiosity Chronicles. Um, you wouldn't even need this because it's all in the Big History Project, but I want to go into more depth than it goes into, so that's why I got this to go along with it but you could just use the big history project and even if you wanted to tie the science in i feel like you could use um this big uh, everything you need to know about world history book is a great resource i highly re highly recommend this it, it's just an extra resource but it really is super great it doesn't have to be just an extra resource it could be what you use um as your spine um it's, it's a great book. I just really, really, really love these. So this I always recommend. But you could literally get by with the Science Encyclopedia. I also have the um, World History Encyclopedia that we'll be using as well. But you could totally get by with just, you know, a couple of resources books and the Big History Project. Um, and then maybe add in Curiosity Chronicles if you want to. This I'm just adding in because, you know, we're science people and we like science. So yes, it's a lot of resources. Um, but that's how we like to learn here. We like to have a lot of resources and then just look through those resources. Um, that is kind of our favorite style of learning, kind of, you know, literature based, but but th with resource books is rather than living books. So I think that is all I'm going to share with you guys today. I hope you found this useful. I hope I, I know it seems kind of chaotic, um, but I think it's going to be really great for us and i'm really excited about it i will of course be sharing updates along the way as to how it's going um and yeah so i think that's all i'm going to share with you guys today i hope you would follow me over on instagram at homeschoolology um i try to share as much as i can over there and i think that's it i don't think there's anything else i'm going to share with you so if you have questions, by all means, ask me. I'm happy to answer them. Um, and I think that's it. I know somebody's probably going to ask, can I make this Google Classroom available? I'm working on it. I'm thinking about it, um, and I'm working on it. I'm trying, like, I don't want to worry, like, I don't want to step on anybody's copyright laws, you know. But I think the only things I've done so far is, like, say, do this activity from this you know, from this curriculum or do that activity from that curriculum. I don't think there's anything in there that's going to be. But if you're interested in having my Google Classroom um, set up, let me know and I'll see if I can figure it out to how, of how to share it with you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and sign off. I hope you will come back and chat with me again real soon and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.